series. I put together a 20 page practice packet that we have all been working in. So if this is the first time you're coming to this series, make sure you let me know in the comment section if you want this packet, because every week for six weeks, we have been drawing five facial features for five minutes each. And we're just all drawing along together. There's like literally hundreds of people drawing together. It's so, so fun. So I'm working right in my packet. And if you didn't see this last week, I actually put them all into this cool portfolio so I can see my progress and just have everything all in one place. So that's kind of neat. So I recommend doing that. I have links in the description box. So today we're doing five hairstyles. And so I will be teaching you as I'm drawing in five minutes, just how to do it. What, what are the steps to get you there? And I chose five like super different hairstyles so that you really understand no matter what the hairstyle is, how to draw it. All right, so go grab a pencil, grab your packet, meet me at your easel, and I will see you in a second. I'm so excited because today is hairstyles. I'm setting my little clock here for five minutes because the, the idea around this series is establishing an artful practice that's daily or weekly, um, hoping that even if you just do one of these every day, it will set you off on in a mindset where maybe you'll want to do two or maybe you'll want to do three or all five so it's just establishing a really fun art routine um, i'm doing these every monday for a while now and i don't know about you but it's actually it is legitimately improving my drawing skills any opportunity to practice always works that way you just get better because no one gets worse with more practice that's not a thing so um we're gonna do hairstyles today and this is gonna be a little quicker because these are little, little tiny vignette hairstyles, but I wanna just go over how to draw hair because it's something that a lot of people get stumped on. So I hope um, this little series for today helps. All right, so I'm gonna put on my little timer. I'm trying not to spend more than five minutes on anything. Again, not to hurry myself, but just be, to remind myself like, hey, this is just fun. This is just practice. I don't wanna spend my life's work on you know, one nose because what, you get bogged down in like the, the details of it. And then it kind of doesn't, it's not fun anymore. It becomes too serious. So this kind of keeps it lighthearted. All right. So I'm going to be teaching as I'm going. And these are very general little sketches. So when you draw hair, I am going to start my thing anyways, because I still don't want them to go over five minutes. Um, so you need to start with an oval. I think that's pretty standard practice right or 600 if you're me and you can't you can't draw more than one <laughs> right and then you have your little neck here I like a whimsical neck which is much thinner like look how fat an actual neck is it's they're so wide I like a little whimsy neck all right so to draw hair you need to pick a part now, when you're working with a photo reference, it's super easy because the, the answers are right in front of you. So the part is going to be here. Because see, you can see right where that is. It's right here. You can literally see it. But you know what a part is. You have a natural part in your hair. And that's what I'm talking about here. Now, hair on a volume on your, like if we were drawing this face from scratch, it goes way up and over. And it also will always go into the oval of your girl as well okay let's give her like one oval for a head it's not a thousand as is my nature <laughs> okay so you're gonna pick a part then you need to figure out like the directionality well this side again you can see so every hair has volume so we're gonna kind of come out and we're gonna make this i'm following my reference there to the left right it's gonna come this way so it goes this way. So the volume of it comes off of the oval and then it also comes into the oval space as well. Even if it's flat on the, on the oval, you still need to draw it not flat. Same thing for this side. So that side goes this way. This is gonna go this way. So again, you have volume always, always has to come over and extend beyond the oval that you drew for the circle. And the same thing is true for the hair. Um, this way also has to come, come into the oval space. Okay, so you have this side, so we're gonna come over, it's gonna come up, but it will never ever, the front part of the hair will never 
not to come go into the oval that is the shape of the head. Okay, so then we have these kind of undulating lines here. And actually, I'm looking at her and actually comes down more like that. Okay, so even when your hair is in a ponytail, we'll, we'll come to those next. But you have this volume both above and below the oval that you're drawing of the face of the of the face of the person that you're drawing. Okay, and then all of this now is just in the noise. <laughs> so we're having we have big waves. So just like all the other things that we're drawing, I've drawn this every week, we do shape first, the same is true with hair. Second, we do value. Third, we do details. Okay, we've been doing this every single week. I didn't write this down on the ear week, but I talked about it through each step. And ear week, there was practically no details, and it was almost all shape and value. So shape is what I just drew. We drew the oval for the head. We drew the hair shape. Okay, that would actually be like this is the shape. Okay, the second is the value. So what have we been doing every week? We've been taking our pencils, we've been scribbling in the areas that's super dark, right? So what parts are super dark? And it helps a ton if you have a really um, soft pencil. This is a black wing, it's very soft. It's equivalent to about a 4B, okay? So you have all this, okay, this is the value, this is the same, no matter if we're drawing hair or lips or whatever. Okay, and just like the past weeks, we can use our blending stumps. To, I mean, her hair is one mass, so there's no reason that your drawing cannot also be one mass. And I'm trying to make this quick because because five minutes is my goal and we have a bunch to get through. Okay, so you can use your blending stump to kind of like hurry that process up. Okay, so that's our value. And the details refer to highlights and shadows. So, and you can come back in here and add more if you want. So then you, you have to add some highlights. So here's my mono, this is a little tiny, teeny tiny eraser made by Tombow. Okay, and then you can actually like carve out the highlights. So I see some highlights on my photograph. I can put some highlights in my, on my girl. Maybe she has some here, and here, and there's some here. And so people say, well, I don't understand where to put my highlights. So your, the answer is look at your reference. Oh, I don't have a reference. Go get a reference. <laughs> it's as simple as that. They're there to help you and get, give you all sorts of information so that you know what to do. So then you can just carve in some highlights. All right, so there's my quick and dirty demonstration on how to do hair. And you can like piecemeal out. You know, this is really fast. But that's generally speaking, you know, and some of this will be like jet black. So you can come back in here and really fine tune some things. But I just wanted to give you an a, a overall general thing, okay? So it's the same thing. We have shape, value, details, okay? So that was about six minutes for that little demonstration. Now let's switch it up. It's, I tried to vary them a lot so we could make sure we touch on all different things like bangs, right? Or ponytails, but, or whatever. Okay, so. I'm resetting my clock. I'm trying to teach and draw at the same time. Okay, so same thing here. We have, she's a really long head. Oh, I bet you this is a wig, that's why. So here's her head. She's got a beautiful shape, face. Okay. So remember, we do shape first. And with hair, again, we pick the part. So her part is, she's a middle part, you can see, because all of her hair comes, is perfectly symmetrical. So if it was a side part, then it would not be symmetrical anymore. So her hair, all right, this is her eye line. The eye line, this is her head oval, like we're drawing her from scratch. The eye line goes straight across the center. Well, you can see her bangs 
kind of come to about here. This is her eye line, and then these are her eyebrows, and you can see her bangs end right about here. So the first thing is shape, let's draw the shape, okay? So if her part is here, remember we go up over the oval first, because there has volume. Okay, and I'm just following. Roop. They have a nice little curvy end. Okay, so it goes above the oval, and then I also remember it comes into the oval space. Well, these are her bangs, and this is they go to there. So now we just fill in this area with her bangs. So before I fill that in, because I want to just do shape first. So here's the right side shape. The left side is identical. So we go up and over. Again, we come to about here. And we have our bangs to about here. So that is the shape. Okay, and then we do the value next. So the value is when we color it in or draw it in. And you don't have to draw every line because we can use our blending stumps to help us, right? So that's our little cheat. And a little, little cheeks here, and here's our eyes. Okay. And then in this case, it was asking what's the what's the details. So if there's any you know, loose strands we could draw, some loose strands if you wanted to. Um, and then again, this is where your highlights would go. So she has some highlights like in her bangs. You can just take your eraser and you carve them out. I do have to say too, in my How to Draw and Find Your Style book, I'll just grab it really quickly for you. Um, to show you. All right, so I did that in three minutes. Um, in, this is a hard copy. I actually don't, I'm not happy with the interior page quality, so I don't sell the hard copy anymore, just the paperback. And this, these are available on Amazon. Oh, open up right to the hair section. But the hair section goes through these, and I talk about having an action plan for highlights. So, um, so here's my, you can see it goes, Let's say the part is here, it goes up above and over the oval and then down into the oval of the space. Here's some fun, here's some fun little suggestions. But then we talk about, I talk about there's three action plans for highlights. You have three plans when you're drawing and it depends on the medium that you're working with too. But basically you have to kind of know when you're gonna put them in. So, Option one is you can put down all of your darkest shading first and then carve out the highlighted section or strands with an eraser. That's exactly what I'm doing here, okay? Because we're working in graphite. So it's easier to like just put all the graphite in and then you can take your eraser and carve them out, okay? So that's option one. Option two is you can use a white paint marker, white gel pen or white pencil to draw in the highlighted strands or sections after drawing the rest of the hair color, okay? So if this was like black marker and you're like, oh shoot, I can't erase it out, you could just draw it in. Perfect example right here, Posca pen. You could just take a Posca pen and draw it in. And the third one is you can save the highlighted part of hair and save is in <laughs> quotations uh, by intentionally not coloring in that specific area of the paper. So if, and then I say, if you go this route, just make sure you know exactly where that area is. So that's like, and then I give different examples of each one. Like this is saving the area. So you know where you want them to go. This is her hair. So you purposefully avoid putting your mediums down here. And then, you know, you have the desired effect that you have. So um, I just want to draw your attention to that. I have a lot, there's so much in this book that actually well helps with this entire series. I can't believe I haven't even mentioned it before, but yeah, that's kind of a lot of people's drawing Bibles when it comes to people that like to draw faces so much, which is, uh, definitely me and maybe you if you're watching this series right now. So, so yeah, so we have style number two. Now let's do style number three. So, so cute. All right, so how do we do these little hair buns? 
I wonder if that's, no, it's not even the same girl. So. Okay, so we have our, again, we have our oval. Karen, stop doing 55 ovals. I literally can't. <laughs> it's such a bad habit. Okay, so we have our face with one oval. <laughs> Just one. <laughs> Okay, and this again, this is like the oval you would be drawing if you're drawing her face. So what do we do? We pick the part. Where's her part? Dead center, right? Boom, you can see it right there, how big it is. That's because hair has volume. So even though this is tightly to her head, you still have to go up and over the oval a little bit because there still is volume there, whether you like it or not. Okay, and then again, her hair has a ton of volume. Volume. So if her eye line is halfway, you can see it. Her hair comes all the way here. Her head is also tilted down a little bit, so it comes down even further than it normally would. But you can see this shape. And it's higher on one side than the other. Okay, now as for the right side, this will come off too. There's still volume, always, always, always coming off off of the head, off of the head, okay? So we have volume up, up, over, volume into the oval. Use your reference to guide you and what that face shape looks like. And then we just pop these suckers right on top. But now it looks kind of like appropriate. Okay, so we can kind of blah, blah, blah. Oh, I didn't, this is the first time I didn't use my timer. So we had shape, right? We did our shape. Now we're doing our values. Again, we can preserve the highlights. That was option three. We can draw them in. That was option one. But first we are going to use our blending stump. To just fill in the value part of it. Okay, and then number three again is the details. So if she has highlights, like say she does here, you can kind of carve in some highlights there. She's got some over here. And she can have some here. You know, you just pop them in wherever. Again, look to your reference for ideas. Does she have any highlights? Great. And then you can, you can always go back and fine tune. Again, we're doing details. You can add some loose strands if you want. Or add regular strands so that you can kind of see it better. Why so I switched to a mechanical pencil so you could actually see the individual lines. Yeah, so cute. All right, so regardless of the style, regardless of, you know, all of it, you can, sorry, okay, stop, Karen, stop. Sorry, I just like I need to nitpick the face. I want to develop the whole girl. Okay, so. I hope this is really helpful, but you can really use the same exact method regardless of any hairstyle. So let's do two more and then we'll go to next week's where we're doing face shapes. All right. These are both. I tried to come up with references that were like super unique. All right. See, I can do one oval. Oh God, I can't. See, this is where my muscle memory, I need to make it work for me. All right. Okay. Can we talk about how stunning this woman is right now? Ooh, she should have been on our face shape thing for next week. All right. All right. So we have her face, which doesn't matter if it's right or not. All right. So again, we pick a part. Now, there's like, oh, my God, but there's no part. Okay. So where there's no part, you just assume it's in the middle because, um, because her top knot is centered in the middle. So the overall shape you know, you can see is just kind of like this. However, we still need to do our volume check. So we, we still do it the exact same way, even though it's at a top knot. So you always go above, right? And into the oval, over the oval and into the oval. So 
her ears are here. Jesus, she's like perfect. Her ears don't even stick out at all. So even though it's just a tiny bit and her hair is pulled really tight, you still represent that with a little bit of a line going out of the oval. Because otherwise it's a line right on the oval head and it just looks super weird. Okay? And then you still have to come in. See, because you can see, like, because hair starts growing on the forehead, not just on the top of the line. That's why you always come in to the oval. So you can see she has these little kind of baby bangs, I like to call them, like wispies on either side. But then this hair is pulled up. So the volume and the directionality are all this way. You know, it's not a big distance, but it's still there. There's still hair there. And then, if, and then her, I don't know how she's doing this magically, but, but it's going this way. It's like up and around. So we can do the, so the shape, I kind of skipped the shape part. So the shape is this this, this, right, the shape, now the volume. It's going this way and this way. And then we have value, which again, you know, this is like black in here, so you can get really dark. Don't have to be shy about the value. Again, you can let your blending stump do the heavy sh value lifting for you. Just quickens your job. Boo, boo, boo. Boo, boo, boo. And then, so that's value is done. Shape is done. The last one is details. So again, she has like a huge, a lot of highlights here. So you have kind of two options. You can do little squiggly vertical highlights because that's kind of what I'm seeing. Or you can kind of do a broad highlight this way. I don't, it just gives it a different look. But if you see the highlights, you can put them in. They're kind of squiggly, squiggly that way. You know what I mean? And then if you want to add some individual strands, it's always kind of nice with hair because you have like the mass of the hair but then if you want to have a couple like going outside it really gives the like impression like hair see that way you don't have to draw every single strand but it's still every strand still kind of gets represented by the, the mass and having a few little flyaways is always adds a little realistic flair to it Okay, oh, I didn't have my little timer on for that one either. I just know people struggle with hair a lot, but once you just break it down the same way we break everything else down, it makes it so much easier. All right, I'm getting my clock out for this last one. All right, so again, so this is another one that might be harder, or construed as harder because it's not like a classic long hairstyle. So we have, a, okay, see if I can do, oh, okay, I'm stopping, I'm stopping, I'm sorry. Uh, head. Look at her little pointy chin. She would be good for our face shape lesson too. So you still do it exactly the same way. Step one, pick a, pick a part. Now you can see her part is here. Okay, so it's you can see it. That's why, again, why photo references are, are everything. So I can see where, because that's where all the hair goes to. It like literally points in this direction. So remember, hair has volume. So we're gonna jump up. I always just go up first, I don't know why. But so we're gonna start at the top and we're gonna aim for her bangs, just like we did this other bangs girl, right? To get the, cause remember we gotta do her shape. So let's just do her eye line so we know where to go. So if her eyes are here and her eyebrows are here and I can see from this photo that her hair goes to about here. Okay, we can even get the shape just by doing this. And then we know it has volume, so it has to go up and over, right? 
over the shape and then it kind of tapers in here. You literally like outline it. Okay, all the way over here and then it kind of comes back towards the face. There's your shape, done. This is the eye line if that's confusing. Okay, so this is, we know where we're stopping. So we have the volume go above and now we can just kind of put in these individual hairs and you can see, because we're using a photo reference, what direction the hair is coming from, right? And it kind of ends up here. So it goes into the circle, which was our second kind of priority. And she has this very like sandy color hair. So we're not going to probably do highlights. Um, I'm probably just going to leave it like this because it kind of gives her like a, gives her kind of a look that she has going on. So directionality is super important. And this kind of tapers down like this. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, yeah, and men's haircuts are the same, we, but you still start the same way every time. It doesn't matter. Part, volume, shape, value, details, done. Okay, so I hope that that's super helpful. All right, next week we're doing face shape because I know that that is really tricky for people and it also helps you diversify the faces that you're drawing. So if you like to have a lot of faces in your art journals and in your mixed media projects, um, oh, sorry, that's my other channel. <laughs> I'm getting sidetracked by my two personalities. I have a mixed media YouTube channel too, in case you didn't know, which is much, much larger than this one. Um, but if you do like to have faces in your artwork, no matter what you're doing, if it is mixed media, if it is just regular drawing, it's nice to be able to vary them by varying your face shape. It's a really easy way to do that. So that's what we're doing next week. Click the playlist right here. That will bring you to all of these drawings in this drawing series. And I will see you next week. Subscribe. Same time, same place. The link is on your packet. So don't forget to request your packet. And I will see you at this link next week for a new video.